Once again, hello everybody listening at home. Uh, my name is Antonio Lopez and I'm with Sound Ridge Music. We are a nonprofit founded in 2017 as a grassroots effort to use the power of music to make a positive difference in communities across the Front Range. Today we have our featured artist for the month of May joining us, Billy Shaddix. Billy has made a name for himself in the Colorado music scene over the past few years. Unpredictable in the best way possible, he can throw down pyrotechnic guitar playing or a down-home acoustic song with equal ease and authority. You never know what side of Billy you're going to get when you go see him perform, and that is what keeps his ever-growing audience coming back for more. Hello, Billy. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me. Hey, it's great to see you, Antonio. Thanks for that awesome introduction. Yeah, man. I, I was trying to write it up. I was, uh, I'll be honest, I'm not Terry Gross from NPR. As a matter of fact, this is my First time ever interviewing anyone. So uh, we'll see how this goes. You're my guinea pig. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so uh, first question, if this one's too awkward, we can circle back to it if the timing just seems too off. But I was thinking like a good little icebreaker would be like awkward teenage story. Awkward teenage story. Like something that you think of that you just cringe. You're just like, man, I can't believe Oh, was that crazy? Or... Oh, man. And like I said, we can circle back if that's just out of the gates too weird. It's not It's not too weird. I just need to think of a good <laughs> awkward story. You know, this is a good one. This is a good one. I like to tell this story. Um, I, my wife, Yasmin, whom you've met, um, we've been together since high school. Since we met, we went on our first date in high school. And... Um, one of the first times I came to her door to take her on a date, her father um, saw me at the door and he came, he came to the door and uh, he started looking at me really weird <laughs> and he, and he came right up in my, and I'm like 16 years old, you know, and here's the, the father of a girl that I really like. And he starts looking at me really weird and he comes right up in my face and, he stares at me and he takes his hands and he just rubs them all over my lips and my mouth. And, and I'm kind of like, just, you know, mortified and willingly taking this because it's the girl I'm dating's dad. And I stand there. And then a moment later, my mouth just starts burning and oh, no. he's just like, Hey Billy, come on in. And he had been cutting jalapenos. Oh, wow. And, he rubbed them all over my mouth. Wow. So did your uh, mouth burn for the whole rest of the night? It burned for a long time. And uh, well. it's, been, it's been just a whole life of uh, punishment from him ever since. That's the <laughs> pressure. For, uh... <laughs> That's funny, man. I, I bet your heart was beating like 200 beats per minute. You're saying <laughs> and he's like rubbing your mouth and you're like, what's going on? <laughs> so I, uh, you know. I suppose if I had a daughter, I would do something similar to to her, whoever's coming to take her out on a date. But oh well, yeah, like, like a Shaddix family tradition, you know. Yeah. <laughs> when that moment comes, like you're just going to be happen happening to be peeling jalapenos that night. Exactly, <laughs> hazing them with jalapenos. <laughs> so, uh, you grew up out in San Diego, is that correct? That's right. Right on. So. Yes. Uh, what are some of like your earliest musical memories out there? If I understand right, you you come from a musical family. Yeah. Oh right. Um, my dad and my mom. My mom would always sang in like our church choir and stuff. And uh, her father was a guitar player. My grandfather, and then my dad is a guitar player and was always playing guitar in the house. Wow. And so, um, I just grew. My earliest memories are like sitting around with him and my grandpa playing together. And as a kid, he would sit on the couch and I'd go and put my head up against the guitar while he was playing, you know, and just listen to like the, this like the volume of the body of the guitar. And um, yeah, and so it was just always there. It was just, it, to me, it was a, um, it was a natural thing to wanna, it, it for me, it, it meant, kind of communing with the elders in my family you know my grandfather and my dad were players and so I wanted to be with them and I wanted to be able to hang with them 
and they did it with guitars and that's that's what i wanted to do too you know uh, that's really powerful because when you're that young you know just like the resonance of a instrument in real life is just pure magic totally yeah so uh what kind of music did your family play mostly bluegrass my dad my dad was kind of a folk picker and uh, he played country and western music as a kid and then um when i was pretty young he would go to um picking circles and that they were they were like monthly or weekly i don't remember and he would take my brother and i along and so we'd hang out while he was playing music with his with friends at like pizza places and stuff like that and so and then he had a bluegrass band and so that was kind of the music and that was the music that my grandpa played too so that was sort of the stuff that like um that got me that was sort of my entry into playing guitar was through bluegrass music wow so that's where all your speed comes from man <laughs> burning lines it's just like amazing some of the stuff you play man oh uh, thank you i got in the introduction when i was talking about how like you never know what side of bill you're going to get when you go see you live it's, it's almost like you have these different gears that you're able to kick it into you know and if you if you're just feeling things in a certain way a certain night it's just like billy takes off right yeah man it's like, that's a really cool thing to witness man thank you thank yeah. you so yeah. being that you grew up in that musical family, like what age did you start playing? Can you, can you remember, can you remember a time not playing music? Um, I rem <laughs> there's photographs of me as like a really little kid with a, like a toy guitar entertaining my family. I don't really remember that, but I, my memory, like the first real memory of learning to play, I was probably in like, third or fourth grade and then uh and then i remember playing at an assembly with my dad wow. at a school assembly when i was in fifth or fifth or sixth grade or something like that yeah was that like even now was that probably one of your most exciting gigs you've ever done <laughs> it was awesome you know i think it was like my coming out as a musician because a lot of my friends and stuff and i went to a very small rural school but they all knew that like my dad played music and I had a guitar and stuff, but that was like the first time I ever like got up in front of everybody and, and actually played. And so that, that felt really good. I think that like a, a lot of my identity was probably born or I, it was one of the first experiences I had where like, I really identified with that, that I got to play in front of people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, man, thanks for sharing all that. Uh, yeah. I've, I've kind of always wondered like, just where your music comes from, man, because it seems so deep rooted and it seems it flows out of you. And it seems like there's more to it than just the academic cerebral side of doing music. You know, it's, there's like a lot of spiritual stuff happening in your music. Thank so you. uh, with that being said, like growing up in San Diego, now living in Lyons, Colorado, like what what are some of the things that happened between then and now? And what, what, uh, I guess like more to the point, like why did you choose to move to Colorado and why Lions in particular? Right. That's a good question. Um, you know, uh, Southern, I always felt my whole life, Southern California wasn't the perfect fit. It always felt a bit busy and, uh, just like moving really quickly. And my, my dad, um, would, would take my brother and I, um, backpacking up in the mountains and Sierra Nevada mountains. So we'd, you know, drive six, eight hours to go backpacking every summer. And it was those experiences going to the mountains that I realized, like, I, I need to live near the mountains at some point in time in my life. So I think the goal was set early on to make it to the mountains. And, um, and it took a long time. I was, I didn't leave California until I was in my thirties. And, um, I like to, I like to plan. I'm not a person who makes real spontaneous decisions. So it took, <laughs> it took a while for that to come together. And so, um, you know, Colorado, it was, we moved to Utah first and then to Colorado, um, in 2013. And, you know, there's a lot, there's a story there too that I won't go into, but I think the, the, the overarching thing was just a lifelong desire to be near the mountains. And um, 
And then we found, uh, well, funny enough, when um, my wife and I graduated college, we went on a big road trip through Colorado and we happened to be here during Folks Fest and we came to Lions and went to the Folks Fest in, two th in the year 2000, the summer of 2000. And I remember, we both remember real vividly just being enamored by this area and thinking, oh my gosh, what if we could live here someday? And, uh, you know, that was just a fleeting little thought we had. And then, you know, some years later, all of a sudden we're here and it, it just feels, you know, like a dream come true really to live in the front range. Cool, man. Yeah. So like some people are ocean people and some people are mountain people. And it seems like you grew up by the ocean, but you just had that calling for the mountains. Yeah. And yeah. what what about it in particular about the mountains? Huh. Or is it that thing that's unnameable on you know I think that there's, I think it's, I think it's the idea of wilderness and wild space and these being, you're, you're kind of, you're just close. I feel close to the creation of it all when you're near the mountains, you know, if, if like time is wearing everything away and in our lives included are going to pass and things are going to erode and shift, the mountains are this artifact from you know millennia ages ago that are still here and intact in some form you know it, it, whether they're volcanic or tectonic or whatever they are they're they're just like they're a connection point to the planet and to a bigger story that's much longer than our lifetimes and I think that 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 might be part of the magic that I feel in them, and um, I want to be close to, you know. And I love the ocean. When I lived in San Diego, I mean, I was in the ocean all the time. I, I surfed a lot and swam and spent time on the beach. Um, but I uh, but I definitely you know felt the call to come to come to the mountains for sure. Cool man. So now living in the mountains and. You actually live above Lions, and you got a really cool spot there, man. And I've been to a few of your concerts up at the Rampa Theater. Can you tell us a little bit more about the Rampa Theater and your vision for that, and uh, what you've been doing up there in the Gulch? Yeah. So, um, you know, five years ago we moved up here to this spot. We're on, you know, some acreage. You've been here before, like you said. There's kind of a mountain behind our house. And, um, and I, I built a, I skateboard, so I built a half pipe to skate on. And at some point it clicked to throw a concert on it. <laughs> and then it was actually my neighbor who said, Hey, it's like a ramp theater. and the name stuck. And my vision for it is just that like, it's a be it's beautiful up here. And I love outdoor music events. Um, I in like, to me, there's no finer place to play than close to nature and in a beautiful, serene, quiet spot where you have views and you have trees and rocks and sunsets. And so I just want to kind of share that magic and in, in share music in a space like that. And I think what I'd love to do is be able to host three or four shows a summer, you know, or it's, it's not just me playing, but other people are playing here too i've hosted a couple different bands and singers and stuff um but uh it's it's uh i'm not a, i'm not a great event coordinator you know <laughs> so, um, so much, right? it's a lot of work and it's <laughs> it's complicated when you got family and stuff and and uh and and you're hosting it at your house. And I, I, I think like, I think I could reasonably do three concerts, maybe four in the summer. And that would be ideal for me to do that and yeah. have people come up here and play and play myself. And, and um, yeah, so I, yeah, that's cool. the vision. So besides the, the Rampa Theater, I uh, hear that you've been amassing a pretty sweet home studio up there. Right. And the last, few albums you've done done up there at the Gulch how many albums have you recorded yourself now um I've recorded uh I 
wait. Five? I'm working on my sixth one that I've recorded myself. Wow. That's prolific, man. So like in the in the in how big a time span have those albums been? Um I well like the <clears throat> like probably since like two thousand I 2013 and then 2015 and just about every year since 2015 i've been trying to record an album so so as the, your, oh go ahead man i'll cut you off i was just gonna say like if the songs are there i want to capture them you know what i mean i want to record them and 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 it I, it's like my journal kind of you know like i i i write music as i'm inspired by the, the life experience and it it just feels like the 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 second part to, to that is to record it and encapsulate it, you know, and so I do my best to do that. Cool, man. So on that same thread of thought, you know, I was fortunate enough to get to hear some advanced listens of some of the new album you've been working on. And man, uh, I really like the direction you're taking with it. And just sonically, you're getting some really cool cool stuff on there is that like a pedal cell that i'm hearing or is that just like regular slide guitar or? um i'm trying to remember what song i sent you, sent you, you sent me, i wish oh yeah that's a lap steel in that song lap steel yeah. uh-huh nice man yeah. so you sent me i wish and prayer verse song which was really, really interesting man i felt like that one was kind of real reminiscent of uh paul simon's graceland album Oh, cool. Yeah, you know, I really like the way you had, like, the vocal opening on that. Then when all those, like, interweaving electric guitar parts. Yeah. Just lock in. And what's, what's your process in writing something like that that has all these parts? Thanks for asking that question, because that song was was um, a totally different song. I had written a song that had you know, verses and a chorus and a bridge and an intro and an instrumental part. And I could, and you, I'm sure everybody that's written music and tried to record it has had this experience where you have a vision of what it's going to sound like in your head. And then when you record it, it's not happening. It's not connecting. And that is one of those songs. I, um, we recorded drums and we recorded bass for it. And that's uh, Chad Mathis and Chris Wright both laid down bass and drum tracks for that song. And um, I got into doing my guitar and vocals and stuff. And I, I, I couldn't, it w didn't sound like what I wanted it to sound like. And I went on this hike and I, I kind of went through this process of letting that song go. Like I, I was like, you know what, I need to just let this song go. I'm, and I don't often do that. I'm pretty dedicated once I have, something even if i know i'm never gonna play it i want to finish it you know mm -hmm. and this is one where i was like i'm gonna just i think this song has to just die and i kind of did this grief walk with it and i was out on the land and i i like kind of went through a ceremonial walk where i let that song go and i thought i'm not going to record and i'm not going to pursue that piece of music any further and then of course that night i was over and up in the studio and I started, I just got this totally different vision for it where it, I stripped away all of the content except for the kind of the mantra of the song. And, um, and I just started tracking these guitars over it and built it into this thing, <laughs> you know, that's, it's a six or seven minute sort of uh, build on this theme and uh the and the song is called prayer verse song and it felt like i took it the right the direction that it needed to go you know and and it was just really funny to me because just that day i had pretty much like said i was done with it and yet it, it came back and wow. uh yeah so i think sometimes there's a part of the process is stepping a stepping out of the way and like honoring that if there's a song that needs it's going to come you have to let it come and it has its own time span and it has its own message and its own voice. And I was trying to sculpt it into things that it didn't need to be. And when I finally gave myself the space and recognition that I needed to get out of the part of it, out of the process, 
then it came out, you know, and I'm really happy with it now, you know. Oh, so how different is like the present incarnation of the song from that first, like when you were first trying it, like? Totally different. <laughs> I mean, the only thing that survived is that it's a prayer, it's a verse from the song of my life that's it. Like yeah. I just basically went back to that theme and started going from there. Wow, man. That's like a very Billy story. I love that, man. Cause Thanks. I feel like, uh, you know, this is the longest conversation that me and you have had, but I feel like through Chad Mathis, who plays both bass in both of our bands, right. I feel like you like through the grapevine, I hear of what you're working on. <laughs> Chad will come to, to rehearsal and he'll be like, you know, when Chad gets really excited and he'll be, talking about some new song that Billy's writing or something that he was tracking with Billy. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, man. So we're going to do like a, is there anything else you want to say about the new collection of songs that you're working on? Um, you know, I, I, <laughs> they surprised me. I, I didn't, I didn't, they kind of just came on this fall and then once, um, once we went into quarantine, I, I started feeling a lot of, I started feeling a lot of stuff and started writing a lot. And, and it, and it's an interest, it, the album has taken a really interesting turn because it, I started with the intent of making a very band album, having my band up here, recording it as like close to live as possible. And yeah. then that, that didn't end up happening because of the space between all of us right now. And so what, what has been born from that, I think is an album that's very reflective of the time in that it's um, people are contributing tracks from, from remote places now. And, um, and I'm up here weaving it together as much as I can and, um, and writing stuff from a new place, a new place in time. And, and um, that's reflective of that. And, and, and in that I'm giving, I'm getting a great, vantage point of the things I was singing about and writing about six months ago that feel like they didn't have, I didn't know what I was talking about. And now I feel like I get it better, you know, like there's oh, that yeah. point of reflection from the present into the recent past. So the album, I think it's, it's good. It's indicative of, I'm excited about it. I'm going to release it as soon as I can. Um, and I don't have very much further to go with recording. I've got like one song to wrap up. Um, you mentioned pedal steel. My friend Evan Grace has tracked some pedal steel for me for a couple of songs, which has been a fun additive to the mix. Um, and um, yeah, so I'm excited about it. Nice, man. Well, we're looking forward to hearing the finished product. And I made a promise to Billy that I wouldn't share any of the songs with anyone that he sent me. So <laughs> sorry, everybody tuning in at home. I can't. Can't leak those, man. I just can't do that. Oh. It won't be long. It won't be long. So uh, our time is almost up today. And once again, Billy, thanks for taking the time to chat with us here at Soundbridge Music. And thanks to everyone at home for tuning in and listening. And is there anything that you want to part with? Like any, anything you want to say to the people? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, You know, I... I think with respect to music, I, something I've been feeling is that there's a great connectivity through music right now. And it feels like there's a lot of forces out there that want to take the current situation and use it to divide us up because we're, we're already separated physically in a lot of ways. Uh, but through music, I've found, I, I've had some really amazing connection experiences. I've never been a person to like place my video online or do live streams on Facebook. And through the quarantine, I, I started doing some of these and I found them to be so nourishing just to see the people who are tuning in for music and who want to donate to artists who are still trying to make a living and play their music. And I, I felt just a, a, it's been really inspiring and I, I guess what I want to say in closing is I just feel a lot of gratitude right now and and um, 
So yeah, I'm very, very grateful that so many people are still living with heart and, and showing up for each other, even when they have to do it like this, you know? And so it just, I, I feel a lot of gratitude. Right on, Billy. I'm right there with you, man. And I feel like, you know, what we're doing as musicians and as folk singers, like it's, it's important work, you know, and the way that we're going to like rise out of this is, is people helping people. And it's beautiful witnessing that. And I'm inspired by you and everyone else here in our community, Billy. So thank you, man. Appreciate yeah. It. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio. Hey, you're welcome, Billy. Uh -huh. At home. Once again, we're signing out here. Billy Shaddix, check him out. Where should people go to check you out online? Uh, probably like my Facebook page, which is just facebook.com forward slash Billy Shaddix or my website, which I update quarterly, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'm right with you, man. It's a lot easier to update a Facebook than it is a website. So right. everybody, Billy Shaddix, Antonio Lopez signing out. Have a good right. Tuesday, everybody. Cheers.